Structural geology is looking at how rocks deform and express deformation given different stresses. So in this video, we will look at ductal deformation, which is a type of permanent deformation, meaning even after the stress is removed, the rock still maintains that deformation. So what we are going to look at are folds, and we're going to start with terminology. The first being what we call each of these folds. So we start with undeformed rock, we squeeze it from the sides, it can make the arch shape, which we call an anticline, or the trough shape, which we call a syncline. So I will go ahead and write those on here. And the first thing that we will notice in our anticline and syncline is the difference in the age of the rocks throughout the fold. So here, following Steno's principle, pink is the oldest, green is the middle age, and blue is the youngest. And in anticline, the oldest rocks are in the center of the fold, and it gets younger as you move to the sides. Versus a syncline, the youngest rocks are in the center, and it gets older in terms of the rocks as you move towards the sides. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw an imaginary plane that cuts the folds in half. This is known as the axial plane, which is essentially the plane of symmetry along which the folding is occurring. So I'm going to draw it and label it in each of the folds, the axial plane. So again, we've drawn the axial plane to cut our folds in half. Where this imaginary plane, because it's not real, touches the fold, we have what's known as the hinge line that actually runs along the fold. So draw that in for each of the folds. like so. We then have the parts of the fold that we need to identify. Each set of the sides of the fold, kind of what look like legs, are known as limbs in both the anticline and the syncline. And then the area of maximum curvature is known as the nose. So I'll go ahead and put those names in. on both the anticline and the syncline. So we see again the limbs are kind of the legs on the side, the nose is the maximum curvature in each of the folds. These are some of the terms that you will need to be aware of and understand when looking at folds in an intro geology lab. The next concept we're going to look at and make drawings, that's why this is so blank, is plunging versus upright folds. So when we have, say, an anticline, we've taken a flat set of rocks and we have folded it like so. The hinge line is horizontal, and we call that upright. It's the most simple kind of fold we can have. All we've done is we've taken and folded the rocks, nothing else. But we do have cases where we fold, make our anticline, and then stresses change and we end up with something like this. So instead of being upright, we now see that our fold is plunging downward on one side of it. And we're always interested in the down plunge direction. So I will go ahead and make a couple of drawings to help give an idea of what's going on. 
So we have an anticline. I'm then going to draw the axial plane. And we can see that our fold is sitting with a nice, flat, horizontal hinge line. It would therefore be the upright fold. Versus when we have a plunging fold, We have something that's going to look more as best I can draw it at least like that where we can see one side of the fold has been plunged down which of course is the direction that we are interested in. Additionally, we can have more complicated uh, circumstances where we can actually get doubly plunging folds. Here we've made the initial fold and then the stresses and their orientations change and we have folded our fold. So we can see that very complicated things can start to occur when we have plunging folds versus just our upright fold. The last thing that we're going to look at in this video for folds are overturned folds. And what happens in an overturned fold is we make the fold with compressional stress, squeezing it from the sides. We then have a component of shear stress come in where again it's one sliding past the other and we actually turn the fold to the side. Now, as I draw this, it will become apparent why we call this an overturned fold uh, when you see it drawn this way. So I've drawn an overturned anticline, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put color in each of the layers, red, blue, and green. And what we need to remember for an anticline is that the oldest rock is in the center and it gets younger as you go away to the sides. So red is the oldest, blue is the middle, green is the youngest. Now imagine we were to take a core from the surface into our anticline right here. What would we see? We would see that the green layer, the youngest, is on top of the blue, which is the middle, and the red being the oldest is on the bottom. So this limb of the fold would be called the upright limb, meaning it follows Steno's principle of superposition. However, if we go to the other limb and take a core, we would see that red is on top of blue, and if I had kept drawing it, blue would be on top of green, meaning Steno's principle is being broken. Superposition is being broken. Older is on top of younger. And because of that, this limb is the overturned limb where older and younger have been flipped, and that is why it's called an overturned fold. Even though half of it is still following Steno's principle of superposition, the other half is breaking it. These are some of the properties of folds that you should be familiar with when doing a structural geology lab and an intro physical geology course.